All right, so we're going to be using the arm asset from the character cool dude that we had used from the prior tutorial. If you haven't seen it yet, definitely check it out. What we did is we made a 2.5D turn for this arm. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to bind the arm with smart bones so that when the arm bends, it has a smooth bend right here in the middle. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to clear my keyframes, go back to frame zero. And if you're already familiar with rigging, you know the first thing I need to do is create a root bone. Now from that root bone, I'm going to create my two bones for the arm. I'm going to hit S on the keyboard and remove my bone strength. And I'm going to shrink down the bone strength for the arm and the forearm. The next thing that I need to do is bind the arm bones to the specific images. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the right upper arm image, which is this one right here. And I want to bind both of those bones to that image. So I'm going to hit Control Shift F. What this means is when I bend this arm, the influence of both of these bones are going to influence this image layer right here. And I'll show you why we do that in a little bit. The next thing I'm going to do is go to the right arm open as well, and I'm going to bind those two together. So as you can see here, when you click back and forth between the two arm bones, you can see that they're both bound. Next, I'm gonna go back to the main layer here, and I'm just going to test it. Now that we have those bones bound, I'm gonna go back to my main bone layer and I'm going to test it. I'm gonna use my Manipulate Bones tool and test it. And as you can see there, there is a slight distortion there in the bend. I can adjust the bone strength and try to get that to work just a little bit better or I can use Smart Bones and that's what I'm gonna show you now. So the bone that I'm bending is this one right here and this is what's creating the distortion. So this is what I need to create the smart bone for. So selecting this bone, I see it's named B32. I'm gonna hit Control K on the keyboard to bring up my actions window and I'm going to create a new action or a new smart bone action. Hit OK. Now I'll go ahead and close this. Don't need that at the moment. And I'm going to create my rotation. So where I want this bone to start and how far I want the bone to bend. As you can see there, I have some distortion because what I need to do is I need to bind the mesh layer to the proper bone. So going back to frame zero, I'm gonna hit Control K, go back to my main line to make sure I'm in my main timeline. I'm now going to go to the mesh upper arm. So as you can see there, I have the mesh and I want to bind that mesh to the bone. So I'm gonna hit Control Shift F and I'm going to do the same for the bottom. And I'm gonna bind that mesh to that bone, Control Shift F. Now I'm gonna go back to my main bone and when I hit Control K, bring in my actions window, B32, and then I go to the 24 frame, you can see that everything's bound like it should be. So one of the things that you probably see right off the bat is as I'm bending this arm upwards, the cuff isn't even following it. That is because when we're in our smart bone actions for this particular part, the bone strength isn't going to be affecting this cuff area. But as you know, when I go back to frame zero on my main line and I test that out, you can see it is affecting it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a smart bone for the mesh layer for the upper arm so that when this arm bends, the mesh that is controlling this part of the artwork is going to bend with the arm. So I'm gonna go back to the bone that we were just working with, B32, and now I'm going to go to the mesh upper arm. So real quick, I'm just gonna test it. Okay, I can see that that is the arm that's rotating and this is the mesh that we want to change. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Control A on the keyboard, hit T on the keyboard to select my transform bone tool and then I'm gonna reset those points. And now we're going to make slight adjustments for every few frames for this arm bend. So I'm gonna bend this arm just a little bit right there and I'm going to make adjustments on my mesh for that bend. Now it's good to get in the habit to flip between your reference. Now it's good to get in the habit to change to your reference, which is frame zero. So if I hit Control Shift D, you can see that it's going to take me back to frame zero and then jump me back to frame eight, which is where I'm working currently. So I'm going to be using this a lot to flip backwards and forwards to figure out how the rest of this clothing is going to be affected by this bend. So I'm going to move this in just a little bit, this in as well. So as you can see there, the cloth is being affected as the arm is bending. You can move this in just a little bit as well. So now when I go to this bend, probably not necessary right here on this point. So I'm actually just going to delete that keyframe for that point. All right, and we're gonna keep going. 
So now we're going a little bit further and we're just going to nudge those points over as well. So now everything's gonna be getting a little bit closer up here. The sleeve is going to follow the arm. So we're gonna move all of those points for the sleeve over to there. And as you can see, the points are getting bunched up, but that is okay. We are still going to work with what we have here. I'm going to hit Control Shift D to switch between that reference. And that still looks pretty good. What I'm going to do though, I'm just going to move this shadow just a little bit over along with everything else. And if you need to, you can turn off your points so that the mesh is out of the way as well. And you can also test that. All right, and that doesn't look too bad. It looks like it's starting to get a little bit wrinkled up right there as it should with the clothing. We're gonna turn our points back on so we can see our mesh. Not gonna go all the way yet because it's gonna be really hard to move all those points. So I'm gonna to go to right about there. Now what I need to do is I need to grab all of these points that are right here and I need to move those up. I will bunch those up and make those work, but I just wanna get those out of the way so there's not too many points to where I'm trying to move the sleeve. So I'm gonna move the sleeve back into place ever so slightly for all of these points. You can see there the image is starting to get a little bit warped so it helps if you bring the points a little bit closer together. And that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna go in here now to these points and move them a little bit closer together as well. Same thing, I'm going to reference this movement and it still looks pretty good. And I'm just gonna go through real quick, just see if there's any weird pops. And that doesn't look too bad. So now what I'm gonna focus on is this side of the sleeve. So this part is also gonna be affected as the arm is bending. So let's go ahead and let's move the shadow around. So I'm gonna go back to the shadow right here and I'm gonna move those points that would be affected as that arm is moving. Take off my points and just take a look at it. All right, and that doesn't look too bad. So what I actually could have done for this mesh is I could have drawn out another line right here. Cause as you can see, as I'm pulling on this particular point, it's pulling all of the imagery that's down below. So that's something that you just wanna be careful of. All right, and for the next part, we're gonna go all the way to frame 24 and we're gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna grab all of these points with my lasso, move those up, move the sleeve into place, And let's take a look. All right, that doesn't look too bad. As you can see here, when this point right here, from here to here, there's quite a bit of movement because that's where I just moved it to. So I'm actually just gonna move it back to that area right about there. And that looks pretty good. So now let's take a look at it with outer mesh. And that looks pretty good. So that is how you can use smart bones for your arm bends. And if you wanted to, we can use this little fold right here. We could create a keyframe and then go to here. And then as that cloth is stretching, it's pulling on that, thus pulling that in. So now I'm going to go to my actions window, control K. I'm going to go back to my main line and then I'm going to go back to the bone layer and I'm going to test it. So I'm going to turn my bones back on and I'm gonna hit Z on the keyboard. And uh-oh, what the heck is going on? There's no smart bone. Well, that's because whenever you're using smart warps, it's only going to work on frame one. That's very important to remember. I remember when I first was testing this out and I was trying it, I was like, wait, what the heck? I just created all of that and it's not even working? Well, I gotta go to frame one. So now I'm going to test that bend that I just created on frame one, bend that arm, and as you can see, that smart warp is working pretty good. So I'm gonna hit Control K, 
And as you can see there, we got some pretty smooth movement there. So now with my manipulate bones tool, I'm gonna move that bone. And as you can see there, that looks pretty good. Obviously you can refine that a little bit more, but that just shows you the complete control that you now have over your imagery with this new awesome feature called Smart Warps. I hope you like this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want more awesome videos. Like I said before, definitely check out my friend Jason Batchelor's YouTube channel. He's a really talented artist and graphic designer. And we actually have plans to do a collaboration sometime in the future for something awesome. I'll see you later.